Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Born to Read. We're excited to have you with us. Uh, as we do these reviews of books, we are curious if you guys have any books that you would recommend for us to read, specifically in the realm of theology and Christian living. Uh, if you have those, send them to us. We're on Instagram and Facebook. Send us a message, or you can email them to uh, born to rain podcast at gmail.com. Send us those recommendations. We'd love to check out some of those books and uh, bounce around some of our thoughts on them. Uh, today, I'm by myself again as Mr. Hasso uh, is reviewing for the CPA exam. So uh, if you think of him, keep him in your prayers as he continues to study and prepare for those exams coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Um, this book that we're discussing today uh, is called What's Wrong with the World by G.K. Chesterton, the famous British comic wit um, and social commentator. Uh, so a title like What's Wrong with the World seems like it should be a really, really long book, uh, really complicated, but it's actually fairly simple. Uh, he breaks it down in a few main sections, but he's going to hit he hits on different uh, aspects of culture. He hits on religion. He hits on politics. He hits on business and the home, gender roles, education, all this type of stuff. Uh, it's really, really interesting. And and reading this from a, a book that was published back in 1910 in England uh, is amazing. The cultural perception that Chesterton had on life just in general and human nature and thus it makes it really really pertinent for us here today uh, i read it in 2020 and i'm just shocked at some of the things that he has to say that uh, i'm sure were accurate in his day but just seem even more on the nose in our time right now so it's it's a really interesting uh thing but one of the things that he uh points out here as we seek to have these discussions amongst one another as far as uh, what's wrong with the world he uh, he observes right and rightly i think that he says the whole difficulty in our public problems is that some men are aiming at cures which other men would regard as worse maladies and are offering ultimate conditions as states of health which others would uncompromisingly call states of disease. And just a few paragraphs down, he says, we agree about the evil. It is about the good that we should tear each other's eyes out. And one, one of the things that he, he goes into is um, all the, the failures. When we, when we look back on life, it, it, was, it, it was a puzzling thing for me as I, as I looked and read, I had to reread a couple paragraphs a couple of times because he points out, uh, he says that the only... Uh, perfect ideologies are the ones that fail. And I, it gave me pause. I had to sit and scratch my head for a minute and, and understand. But as he goes on, he kind of explains what he's talking about when he says we're, these perfect ideologies are perfect because they're in the past, they failed, and so we can pick them apart and we know exactly why they failed. We know exactly why these things happen. Uh, and then he says... Uh, Christianity uh, gets dismissed in our modern culture, um, not because it's been, um, not because it's been uh, found wanting. It's been found difficult and left untried, and so it's it it gets dismissed. And so he he points out as to why uh, Christianity, uh, the Christian faith, and religion in general has gotten pushed to the side. Um, he, he really draws these things out um, in this sense. But one of the things that I think is really important to look at when he breaks this down, uh, it, it is somewhat funny uh, to read when he, when he deals with the topics of religion. Uh, he was a Roman Catholic, so if that's a, if that's a knock that I have against the book, uh, it was that, that he was a, a Roman Catholic. And so a lot of his... Um, assumptions about religion and uh, what he calls Christianity really come from a 
reliance on the traditions of Rome. Uh, and so one of the things that he has a problem with that he believes is wrong with the world is the Protestant uh, Christianity the and Calvinists and Puritans in particular uh, as humdrum, rigid, uh, uninteresting people. And so he has, he literally has a whole chapter in this book dedicated to uh, the problems of Calvinism in the world. So it's a really interesting uh, thing as a, as somebody who, who falls in the category of a reformed uh, Calvinistic uh, tradition of the Christian faith. It's really interesting to see somebody from the, the opposite side looking at it and, and evaluating it. And I think there's a, a fair amount of criticism there. Uh, one that I see even today is that uh, those who are of the Reformed camp can be uh, arrogant, stuck up, you know, the, the list goes on. Uh, and he observes that, especially when he addresses uh, the the Puritans as being too rigid and not being able to enjoy life at all. And they're, they're bound so much by rules that they don't know what it means to be free. And I think there's a, a fair criticism there, uh, even as we discussed uh, in our last couple of episodes on the Christian Sabbath, uh, when we look at the Puritans who would say, you're not even allowed to smile on the Lord's Day because it's a day for worship and it's not for your own pleasure, so you shouldn't be laughing and gleeful on the Lord's Day. You should be serious and melancholy and make it a day of reverent worship. Uh, Chesterton looks at some of these things and goes, well, these guys... uh, are, are taking life too seriously there. Uh, uh, Chesterton was known for being a very jovial fellow. Um, and so he, he points out that there should be uh, more joy and it's not so much about uh, being so rigid that you don't enjoy life, that, that you don't experience freedom and, and um, be a little bit more jovial. So that's an interesting perspective. Uh, even for those who are not uh, of the, uh, Calvinistic convictions. Uh, it, it would be interesting as you would read it to, to see the the little jabs that he likes to take at Protestantism in general, um, but Calvinism and Puritanism uh, in particular. It's it it's quite comical when when he uh, brings it up. So uh, just a, a funny little side note. One of the other big portions of the book that I thought was incredibly interesting was as he talked about uh, gender roles within the household, within business, uh, and and the women's suffrage. So he's right there in the the early 1900s looking at this big movement that's starting to rise up of uh, the equality of women and needing women to be able to vote, uh, needing uh, women to have positions in the workforce. Uh, And he just examines the the pros and cons of that um, and really in favor of a traditional household, which is a, a really, you know, it, it may be viewed somewhat negatively today. And yet I think the observations that he makes uh, are, again, very, very on the nose. He, he pays attention. He compliments the difference between men and women, that, that women, um, the, the men tend to be more uh, outgoing and brash and not considering the risks where the women are more calculated and conservative, uh, and that's a good thing. And he points out that these are things that uh, are meant to balance one another out. A good man is balanced by uh, a good woman, and and those aren't bad things. And so to try and make a woman more like a man is actually dangerous for the woman. Uh, And this harkens back to our discussion on one of our earliest Born to Read episodes of Wiley's book, The Household and the War for the Cosmos, as well as Man of the House, um, is that bringing women back into the home uh, is not limiting them. Uh, It's freeing them and putting them in a place where they can succeed uh, to be the masters uh, within the house. And then the the man is free to specialize. Uh, And that's where this observation is that um, men in the competitive workforce are expected to specialize and be competitive in their specialization. And in doing so, that actually frees a woman to pursue many different diverse interests, which is, um, again, as he puts it, the opposite of the subjugation. But the problem is, is our modern society 
wants to hold to those traditional values and wants to say, okay, yeah, a woman is supposed to take on these these roles and be a keeper at home, but she also needs to be equal to a man and be out in the the workforce and keeping up. And that's just um, not fair. It's not um, considerate to to them. Uh, and so it makes it really, really dangerous to be uh, and dangerous and damaging to women to say uh, the best you can be is exactly like a man. Um, and so when, when you put a person in that position is to say you're uh, what you are, the way God created you to be uh, is not good enough. You have to be like that other person. Um, and, and so it's very, very dangerous. And what, what he uh, points back to throughout the whole thing, and it's a, really kind of his main thesis, um, is the, our culture's emphasis on pragmatism over principle, and that we apply simple things to, well, if it works, it must be good, versus, well, what what is the principle behind the thing? And there should be something bigger uh, and better uh, to consider. And so when he continues on uh, when he when he deals with school uh, he he deals with a lot of educational things and I don't want to spoil everything in it because there's there's just so much so those are those are some of the the highlights that I that I saw a few words of caution from it obviously if you were to go to go into reading the book there are some things to consider I think it's a, a, a as far as the culture goes there there's some very important things that are very applicable to us. Um, again, being a Roman Catholic, he relies a lot on the, the Romish tradition, um, which I would tend to disagree with uh, on a lot a lot of it. Um, but he also um, is dealing with a lot of British politics, um, which are just not familiar to me. Um, and so th- that's a little bit challenging as you're getting through where he's citing specific issues, specific news cases. And uh, like, I don't really know what was going on in 19, early 1900s British politics. And so it's uh, a, a little bit of a, a challenge there. But um, as, as he addresses these, uh, these issues, I think his overall view of um, human nature, the Christian faith, um, and how it applies in the culture and how the culture uh, needs to get fixed, but we all, we're all obviously going to disagree on the, the different ways it can get fixed. I think his observations um, are necessary for us. So I'm going to put this as a, a must-read book with a few caveats that there are some things in there that I think uh, are a little bit of a drawback. I mean, it is a little bit dated. Uh, his, his Catholicism is a little bit uh, questionable, um, and his view of uh, Protestantism as one of the dangerous things that are wrong with the world, as though he views um, tradition as one of the, the hallmarks of, of life, and that, that's what's going to fix things. Uh, I think he's on to something in some of those principles where, where he's saying, look, we need to hold back to our traditions and look at what the, the Christian tradition offers, to, to which I would largely agree, and yet he's uh, largely operating on some of these uh, uh, Catholic presuppositions, which which just makes it a little bit uh, on shaky ground. But overall, uh, a, a very solid book and a very relevant book for us today. Um, if you're listening to this now when we're running it here in October, um, it would be worth trying to read uh, before uh, November election rolls around because I think his observations just specifically on society, the politics are obviously going to be a little bit shaky because it's a different different system, uh, but his observations just in, in terms of the basic uh, polity within culture is actually very, very relevant. So uh, highly recommend it. Again, this is uh, What's Wrong With The World. It's actually free on Kindle. So if, if you're a Kindle reader, uh, check it out. It's free on there. Um, well worth your time uh, and, and a relatively enjoyable read as he is a, a comic and and will give you some uh, fun little turns of phrase here uh, that will just make you chuckle. So uh, a, an enjoyable read overall, um, very pertinent, very accurate for our day-to-day. Um, check it out, What's Wrong with the World by G.K. Chesterton. Again, if you guys are enjoying these book reviews, 
send us those book reviews that that you'd like us to read. What are what are some of those theology books? Um, or are there topics, uh, you know, subjects that that we should cover? Uh, whether in our uh, main episodes are born to rain episodes what theology concepts you're, you you'd be interested in hearing us discuss but also if you have any books on christian living or uh, theology or or those types of things i think we'll be getting into some fiction books here pretty soon maybe get some c.s lewis into this mix so stay tuned for that um other than that keep jeremiah in your prayers as he continues to study for the cpa exam and we will catch you next time